Hi guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and today we're going to have a backless love video. I know a lot of you already know what this is because so many of you requested it in my feedback form recently, but for those of you who aren't familiar with it, basically Backless Love is a series that I do sporadically, where I take a look at three titles that have been out for a while that maybe you may have never heard about when they came out, or heard about and wanted to read, but now it's been so long that you've forgotten about them, and we just kind of highlight those and bring them back to your attention. So sometimes they're books that I've read and recommend, sometimes they're ones on my shelves that I have had for ages and still haven't read, and I'm like, why haven't I read this? Today they are books that I've read, and they're on a theme, which was inspired by the first book I'm going to talk about, which was a recent read for me, but it's been on my TBR for a long time and it's been out for quite a while. And I just realized I forgot my phone in the charger, so I can't show you the picture, so I'll have to insert pictures, but I recently read this and I loved it, and so it inspired this whole video. And that book is Shades of Milk and Honey. I had been meaning to read this for ages, I've heard nothing but good things about it, I've had so many people recommend it to me personally and tell me you will love this, and I had fully intended to read it. The only problem was, I bought further books in the series, but I had never picked up that first one, mostly because I wanted a specific cover and I was having trouble finding it. So stupid. But then one day I realized that it was available on Hoopla, so I ended up listening to it on audiobook and absolutely loved it. Now the reason people recommend it to me, and why it's part of this video and this theme, is that it's very reminiscent of Jane Austen. It's set during the Regency time period, it's got this kind of like gentle romance, you know, it's not shoving in your face, it's not like a steamy romance, it's like that building romance. And I totally get the comparisons, I think it is a very loving tribute to Austen, but it's also a fantasy novel and it works in this great, um, very interesting magic system. It plunges you into, and I really like when that happens, It's not there's not a lot of exposition explaining how the magic works, you're just supposed to get it. And that may make it confusing for some readers in the beginning, but I actually really appreciate that. It feels a little more like the voice is complete when they're not like breaking the fourth wall to kind of explain things to you. It's not a retelling of Austen by any means, but it definitely... It definitely has that element there, so if you are an Austen fan I think you'll appreciate it, but you can read this and love this without any kind of Austen references, um, just based on the fact that it's good, and I highly recommend it on audiobook because that was excellent. Which brings us to our theme of kind of Regency era-ish reminiscent of Jane Austen books that are not actually Austen retelling, so that is our theme for today. Maybe I should have saved this for August. But I didn't. So our second book is Keeping the Castle. This one, I just, this is another one that I had had for ages, had been meaning to read, had so many people recommend it to me. As you can see, I have this physical copy that had been sitting on my shelves, but I ended up reading it in audiobook. <laughs> I just needed something to read one day, it was on Audible, and I was like, you know what, why not? I'll try it, and if I like it, then maybe I'll end up switching over to the physical book. I didn't, though, because the audio was excellent definitely stuck with that. The little blurb on the front says it's perfect for fans of I Capture the Castle, and I agree. I think that this is like the perfect mashup, the little baby, the love child, of I Capture the Castle and Jane Austen. It perfectly like encapsulate those those two books and those two styles. Now, for me, as an Emma lover and as a secret half Emma, half Lizzie, I don't have a problem with main characters, <laughs> like Althea, but I know that there are a lot of people that struggle with Emma, and I would say of, of any Austen's characters and of any Austen books, this is most reminiscent of Emma in a lot of ways. Althea's a bit of a snob, and I know a lot of people struggle with that. So if you don't like Emma and you don't like the redemption arc, maybe you won't like this, but I loved it. I thought it was so well done. I thought Althea was hilarious, even though she was snobby. And like, she's young. It comes around, you know? I'm pretty sure there's a follow-up to this book that I really need to pick up. I was hoping to listen to it on audio, though, because I loved this one so much, but I think I just need to pick it up anyway, because... firm favorite. Like, I've already thought about rereading this multiple times, or re-listening to it, um, and it hasn't been that long since I read it, so that's how much I liked it. What was the last book? What was the last book? <laughs> Shit. I really should have wrote it down. Oh! And the third and final book of this video is one that I own, and I would be showing it to you right here, 
if I could find it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know where it is on my shelves, and I also know that it's almost impossible to get to, so I just gave up. But that is Sorcery and Cecilia. This one that I'm talking about specifically is a duology. It was originally two books, but you can get them... There's a fly in here. It was originally two books, but you can get them combined into one, like, omnibus edition, which is what I read. Either way you go for it, I recommend it, but if you can get the two-in-one, like, go for that. Again, this is another one that feels reminiscent of Jane, it feels like a tribute to Jane, but it's definitely not a retelling. Um, it is YA, I should have mentioned. Shades Milk and Honey is adult, Keeping the Castle kind of feels like a bridge between the two, but more YA, and Sorcery and Cecilia is YA, even leaning a little middle grade. Nothing you know, inappropriate to read if you're younger. Again, this one is one that blends Regency and kind of magical elements, obviously with a name like Sorcery and Cecilia, and it's charming and it's funny and it's just one that I I ate up, you know? It's one, one of those books that you read with a smile on your face and you just, like, don't want it to end. It was absolutely one of those books for me. It is another one, too, that I have been wanting to reread that I think about rereading all the time. It just pops into my head. Um, Patricia Lee Reed tends to do that to me. So I probably should just read some more of her books. But yeah, if you're looking for something that kind of will fill that little Jane Austen hole in your heart without actually being a retelling, maybe you don't like Jane Austen fanfiction and you don't like seeing your characters and your version of them tampered with, but you want something that kind of hits that sweet spot, I would recommend all three of these highly. And even if you're not an Austen fan, still, absolutely think they're worth the read. I think they're so charming and fun. I think you'll fall right into them. I would really actually like to have people who aren't Austen fans or aren't historical fans pick these up and tell me what you think because I recommend them. But that is all for this Backlist Love video. If you would like to see more of these or if you have any themes that you'd like to see me tackle in one of these, definitely let me know that in the comments. And if you have any recommendations of books that have been out for quite some time that you think people need to have a little refresher on, maybe need to pick up, maybe need to dig out from the forgotten dusty corner of their shelves, definitely let us know that in the comments as well. Apparently the entire last half of this video is just going to be dogs barking. There are no less than four dogs barking right now. All right here. Two at my house, one across the street, one walking down the street, at least one walking down the street. Hopefully the camera's not picking all of that up, but if it is, I'm sorry. But it's okay because we're at the end of this, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Looking forward to chatting with you, and until next time, thank you guys for watching, and happy reading!